Hi, I'm Mike Stanton. It's August 19th. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm here with Brian Babler from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Brian, thanks for being here. On a week where we saw a fairly dramatic turn in Muni yields, they moved higher. What was driving that? Hey, Mike, thanks very much. Um, yeah, you know, we've we've had an interesting couple of weeks here. Um, you know, a couple of uh, a couple of factors, um, you know, both on the, the macro rate side uh, and then Muni specific. Um, we did see just broader interest rates drift higher, generally speaking, um, and in more of a steeper fashion um, after, uh, particularly after the FOMC meeting minutes were released on Wednesday. Um, you know, over the week, uh, we've seen the, the long end uh, up by about 12 to call it 15 basis points or so in yield. Um, while the front end uh, for uh, uh, for treasuries has remained pretty flat, two years only up, you know, maybe two basis points or so from last Friday. Uh, but on the um, on the muni side, we've seen a dramatic uh, increase in front end muni yields, um, and that's been going on all month, um, but really accelerated this week. Uh, we've seen about a 28 basis point increase in one year MMD. Um, in the last week or so, uh, that's about 30 to 35 basis points in, uh, in two and three years on the MMD side. And, and that's with, uh, without a potential four to six basis point cut again today. Uh, so you've really seen, you know, kind of a, a normalization in, in front end ratios, which had really gotten very, uh, very rich, um, and have now kind of normalized, um, to a certain extent, um, so so that front end of the Muni curve has really, uh, you know, really taken a hit uh, over the last uh, week or so. Out long, um, it's been more uh, in line with just general rate uh, increases. Um, you know, ten to thirty year MMD is up about you know call it uh, thirteen to seventeen basis points or so um, in the last week, with uh, you know maybe another one to four basis point adjustment coming by the close of business today. Um, but uh, but that's really, you know, that's really been a product of um, uh, an end to seasonal uh, cash flows, you know, good coupon reinvestment um, and maturities, uh, June, July, August, um, as well as a little bit of a reversal on the fund flow side. You know, we saw a brief respite uh, with some uh, inflows uh, on the tax exempt bond funds. Um, and that, uh, you know, that that's kind of gone back to uh, to outflows. Um, and then uh, the other thing that we've seen this week, uh, which we haven't in a while, uh, was an increase supp in supply. Now, uh, a big chunk of this week's calendar was taxable, uh, but we saw nearly 13 billion in total supply, which we haven't seen since around the middle of July uh, in, in that volume. And that's that's actually really almost as much as the last three weeks combined uh, for the Muni side. In the prior three weeks, we saw about 14.9, 15 billion, uh, and we were at almost 13 billion this week. Again, four and a half billion of that was taxable. Um, so really only about eight and a half billion or so uh, in tax exempt supply. So it really wasn't anything that put a tremendous amount of pressure on the market, um, but definitely more than we have seen uh, in the last few weeks. And now looking ahead to next week, uh, we're seeing supply come back down. It is the end of August. Uh, historically, that's a quiet period for the market. What does the calendar look like? Yeah, uh, you know, a little bit of a, a, a drop down, but uh, but still pretty decent. Uh, we should see about seven and a half to eight billion uh, next week. Maybe that climbs a little bit, uh, but you're right. You know, this time of year, as we lead into, you know, the last kind of uh, week, uh, week or two of summer, uh, we'll be coming into Labor Day, the Labor Day holiday, uh, as well as some of the religious holidays. Uh, the next FOMC meeting will be in September, so that's gotten back to uh, a week that uh, that issuance uh, typically avoids. Um, so, you know, we may see a little bit of a dip down um, for the next couple of weeks here, but uh, but next week at about seven and a half, eight billion, um, most of that, uh, you know, around uh, um, uh, seven. Uh, to seven and a half will be uh, will be exempt. Um, so you know, kind of steady uh, supply wise on the tax exempt side week over week, uh, even though the headline number um, is down a little bit. 
um, but uh, but still should be um, you know still should be uh, pretty decent uh, in terms of supply. I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, a couple of interesting BAM insured deals from last week, a little over $250 million total insured. What stood out to you? Yeah, uh, BAM, uh, BAM was active this week. We did, as you said, we did over $250 million uh, in par insured. Uh, a couple of the highlight deals uh, from this past week were $96 million uh, for Mobile County, Alabama um, schools, which was uh, an A2 rated underlying transaction that got priced by Stiefel. Uh, we also uh, insured a $30 million transaction for Northeast Ohio Medical University, uh, which was also priced by Stiefel and came with an underlying rating of BAA1. Uh, and then away from that, uh, another $29 million for Ennis, Texas, uh, which was priced by R.W. Barrett and carried a AA- minus underlying rating. So uh, pretty decent, uh, pretty decent week in terms of activity, fairly diverse across um, you know, geographically as well as sectors and, and underlying ratings. Uh, so it was a really nice week this week. Very good. Well, thanks for your time this week, Brian. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Mike.